fucking serious? Yeah, you think that uh, maybe things were beginning to change for license games? Well, at least for the Walking Dead license. What with uh, Telltale's excellent game, uh, which made my top 10 best games of 2012 list. Uh, combine what seemed like knowledge and respect for the license with Terminal Reality, uh, makers of the excellent Ghostbusters, and unfortunately Star Wars Connect, uh, we may have had ourselves another hit, right? WRONG! Oh my god, what is that, a broken piece of floating fence? What the f- I'm right here, you bitch! Y'all fucking zombies pay attention to me! I will slap, I will slap you! I will slap you! I will slap you! What are you doing over there, bitch? Going to town on that fence? I'm kill this motherfucker! Fuck you! Look at what are you, break dancing? What are you, hardcore dancing? Stupid, <laughs> slam your head against a wall. How fucking difficult is it to program AI for fucking zombies? Are you serious? As a huge fan of the show, this game pissed me off. Survival Instinct is another half-assed, six-hour, low-effort, piece-of-shit cash-in clearly rushed out by Activision to get a piece of the AMC action. This is a below average repetitive survival horror first person shooter to anyone who hasn't already lowered their expectations to dangerously low levels. All right, let me just get some supplies. <clears throat> Crack this glass open and get the supplies inside. It's a zombie apocalypse. Are you kidding me? What is this bulletproof glass? Everybody, okay, I'll tell you what, this mother of course, everybody's installed bulletproof glass. And why should you do that? Uh, should we have lowered expectations for every new game release? Uh, do you think that by taking $10, $10 off the price uh, down to 50 is an excuse to make a crap ass game? Well, you're wrong. You have to start from zero with every game. Give it a chance. And this game had potential. First off, to tell a good, interesting story. Hell, it even uses my favorite and most hated characters from the show, uh, Daryl and his brother, Merle. Hey everybody, my name is Michael Rooker. I play Merle in The Walking Dead. Adapt and overcome, little D. In the game, it's, it's uh, pre-Atlanta with me and my uh, little brother, Norman Reedus. And he plays Daryl. And it's spelled D-E-R-L-E. -E. It's not Daryl, it's Daryl. Please get that right. In the opening level, you play as Daryl's father uh, for a second before zombies attack him, uh, forcing Daryl and his uncle to put their father out of his misery. Dad? Oh, Dad, no! We can... Well, we could... Daryl, he's too busted up. Nothing can be done now except ease his suffering. Sorry, brother. The rest of the game then centers on finding Merle on your way towards Atlanta where an evacuation is being carried out. Uh, what results though is a lazy story barely worth telling, filled with forgettable side characters, and despite having two strong brother characters from the show, it doesn't offer co-op. Now, Terminal Reality knew that they would take shit for not having co-op, but they've been quoted as saying there would be no co-op because they wanted to focus on the story. Well, fine. But then they turn around and cut the game off abruptly and this year's second worst ending and leave tons of loose ends at the six hour mark? Story my ass? What a crock of shit. This ending sucks. It's like, if you're gonna tell a prequel story, then tell the prequel story completely! Idiots! What, what are there supposed to be more Walking Dead survival instincts? Maybe season two or, or seven seasons of these things before they meet up with Rick? No! Just no! No! In this day and age, when you put out another zombie video game, you, you have to bring something fresh, some new ideas to the table. 
uh, especially with the Walking Dead license, as you aren't going to get to see uh, different types of zombies. I mean, there's no spitters or fatties or, or toxic zombies or crap like that. They keep it cr uh, true to the show, uh, to their credit. Now, Survival Instinct does actually tr try to bring some interesting concepts on paper. Uh, three of them, in, in fact. Uh, selecting multiple branching paths to Atlanta, resulting in completely different levels. Uh, scavenging and m managing your ammo, fuel, and food. And deciding to recruit different survivors with different traits along the way. But the game executes these also poorly. You, you start with a changeable car type, which can fit a certain amount of survivors uh, that you recruit along the way. In missions, if you do certain optional objectives, like finding food or medicine for them, many will join you. My name's Sarah. I was cutting hair when they first came. Fought my way out of the salon. Scissors, if you can believe it. I was with a group, but they... I'm on my own now. Give me some food, and I'll come with you. What's cool is that you can completely ignore some of them, or never even see a particular survival in one playthrough. I'm guarding the cash until Sheriff Turner comes up from Pemberton to relieve me. Guarding it? From who? From the damn ghouls! Who else? You slow? Now, after the main level is done, you decide who you could fit in your car and then select a path towards Atlanta. Now, the game allows you to select a method of travel, uh, the back roads, which takes a ton of gas, but you have more opportunities to scavenge, or scavenge and find uh, survivors, um, at the streets, which use less gas and has medium stop chances, and highways, which have pretty much no stops, even though I would get one a, a few times, uh, use the least amount of gas, but have a high chance of your car breaking down which will then lead to a side mission where you need to find like a radiator hose uh, in order to repair it. Or you may have to push a, a car blocking the path out of the way on the highway. Those were kind of cool. Um, the scavenge opportunities in the game allow you to stop at smaller mini town locations to pick up more ammo, food, and fuel uh, to keep you better prepared for the future main missions. I loved this concept. This was really cool in the game. Even if it was sort of linear and closed off, I mean, this isn't free roaming, guys, okay? Uh, there are plenty of invisible walls and conveniently placed cars and barricades blocking you off for a, a more realistic experience in the side missions and even in the main levels uh, where you should just be able to jump over things you can't for the sake of the game. It's annoying and just feels lazy and cheap and it takes away from the atmosphere tremendously. Another thing that takes away from the enjoyment is how often these side level missions locations repeat. I mean, you play in the same small levels over and over, just from different ends or the levels flip like we're fucking stupid and wouldn't notice. And where was the effort in putting in more? And also it should be pointed out that the game breaks its own road selection system. Sure, you can pick the back roads to ensure more stops for items, but at oftentimes it's scripted whether or not you'll stop at all. Because if you hear a voiceover at the start of the sequence, the car will not stop, no matter what. It's scripted, there's no die roll. So you're just wasting a fuck ton of gas because you didn't know. All right, pick back roads for the maximum amount of stops. And fucking voiceover. Great. Wonderful. There's not a damn stop. Look at you just wasting my gas. Wasting a ton of gas. This is bullshit. Don't give us a false choice if it's gonna be scripted. You know, so unless you memorize where these scripted voiceovers are, you can't conserve or plan realistically at all. Um, and then sometimes even the frequency is out of whack with the stops. So, you know, I, I found, also I found that sending survivors out for fuel while you do a mission is never worth it. Since uh, you are out of gas missions happen automatically and they can give you between a quarter tank and half a tank with minimal resistance and zero risk to your squad. And that's another thing. 
In the game, I really did like this concept of assembling my squad of survivors and, and choosing who to pick up or, or leave behind as, as each survivor has listed, you know, certain skills and preferences and health. But, again, none of it really fucking mattered. I mean, first off, they won't join you on the actual missions themselves. They either sit in the car with their thumbs up their asses while you battle zombies, or they can be sent out behind the scenes to scavenge for food, ammo, and fuel. And so sending more out at once and equipped with weapons keeps their risk meter low so they make it back in one piece. But no matter what, they always come back hurt, nearly dead, and bring you like one Gatorade bottle and two pistol bullets that you could have found yourself in the fucking next level. Awesome. Let's see, what, what did you guys bring back? One, one piece of food each? Oh, and you got fucked up. So let me expect, let me guess. You want to eat the food that you just found because you messed it up and you got hurt, huh? Time and time again, they bring so few fuel or food, it doesn't even make up for their loss in health. You'll just be spending it on, on getting them back up to even. Even at low risk percentages. What did you guys bring? Two fuel? Two fucking fuel each? And you guys are nearly dead? What the fuck were you doing out there, you fucking morons? God! Thank God I collected one of the 16 squirrels where you guys were fucking around and I don't even know what to do with it! Main characters are put off to the side and won't even scavenge with the rest of your squad. I mean, Merle's barely in the game. And if you were thinking that he'd be controlled by an AI, no. Or helping you out by your side when you're on a mission, no. He's put off half off the screen most of the game, even in the survivor selection area. What the, what the fuck? Merle? Merle, what are you doing? <laughs> Like, I can't, I can't see you. You're in my peripheral vision. Please, could you, Merle? That's, that's just rude, man. Like, what are you doing over there? <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, you can't even send him out to scavenge like the rest of your survivors. Lazy asshole. Sonny boy, I could stand here doing nothing a hell of a lot longer than you. I guarantee you that. Sonny boy, I could stand here doing nothing a hell of a lot longer than you. I guarantee you that. Even occasional unimportant characters are put off to the side like that. Uh, I don't understand that. I mean, I did appreciate some of the actual gameplay. The elements of survival horror are there. Ammo is limited. I love that. It's exciting to search for new weapons and gear. Uh, you can sneak by crouching and, and, and then taking out zombies from behind one hit. Uh, you actually try to avoid large herds, it, that becomes necessary as zombies outnumber you and respawn occasionally. Uh, when zombies get too close or surprise you from the side, they can grapple you, which puts you into like a mini game where you, you aim on the zombie's head with your knife and, and then strike. And actually, it's sometimes even a more effective way of killing zombies in a group. So you kind of seek out like a thousand zombies, then stop with full health and like nail them all in the head. Graphics in this game aren't up to par. I mean, especially the static, lifeless environments, uh, the below average textures on the Xbox. As far as extras, 
there aren't any. I mean, there, there are some absolutely worthless collectibles that seem really out of place. Kind of awkward. Uh, these are supposed to be pictures of, like, the developers of the game? I'm not sure. I, I mean, I can't view them anywhere on the main menu, so it's not like a collectible. Um, instead, on the main menu, you can see relics, which you can unlock by saving certain people, uh, keeping them in your squad, doing certain things, that will then allow you to have stuff like more health on repeat playthroughs, or an assault rifle and a cro uh, crossbow to make it ridiculously easy for three-hour speedruns. I don't know. Um, one thing, though, to the game's credit is that it actually does have replayability. That's the one thing it's got. I mean, as the multiple paths you take close off during other missions, and the different survivors may you may never see. So it can be fun to go back and play again to see what and who you missed. Um, and this brings the game's total length up to maybe around 12 hours uh, if you want to put yourself through it again. But with repetitive gameplay and levels, an uninteresting, unnecessary story, and several broken mechanics and concepts, it's, it's kind of hard to recommend it. The final verdict for The Walking Dead Survival Instinct, I would have given a 4 out of 10. A meh. But that ending and the lack of extras combined with, you know, everything I've covered here may easily makes it just a 3 out of 10. Just terrible. I mean, Daryl and Merle do excellent voice work here and they're pretty much the only reason to even consider playing the game. It's just not worth your time or money, to be honest. Unless your expectations are really low. But they shouldn't be. So until then, I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show.